This machine has no motor, no batteries, and zero hidden wires. It's been running for days, completing cycle after cycle, powered entirely by a loop of energy that seems to defy our conventional understanding of thermodynamics. You might be looking for a hidden trick, a secret induction coil, or a battery tucked away in the base. But the truth is far more incredible. It's a matter of high-precision engineering meeting a very rare material phase shift at the molecular level. To understand why this sphere is moving, we have to look at the building blocks of the universe. Deep within the periodic table, at atomic number 64, lies an element called gadolinium. It's part of the lanthanide series, and it possesses a physical property that is almost unique among all elements on Earth, a room temperature Curie point. Now, every magnetic material has a Curie point, the specific temperature where its atomic dipoles become so agitated by thermal energy that they lose their alignment, turning the material from ferromagnetic to paramagnetic. For iron, that happens at over 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. But for gadolinium, that transition happens right around 70 degrees. This means that in a standard room, gadolinium is right on the edge of its magnetic identity. It is a material in a state of constant indecision. By manipulating just a few degrees of temperature, we can effectively flip a physical switch inside the metal itself. But turning a piece of metal into a magnet is only half the battle. To turn that property into constant motion, I had to design a specific environment. This is where the engineering challenges began. When you're working with a four millimeter sphere, physics starts to behave differently. At this scale, surface tension and fluid adhesion are your biggest enemies. If this sphere gets wet, the water acts like high viscosity glue. The capillary forces are so strong that the magnetic pull wouldn't be enough to break the bond. To solve this, I spent hours in CAD iterating on what I call the thermal bridge. The goal was to cool the sphere down to 65 degrees without ever letting a single molecule of water touch the metal. The final design features a dry, low friction channel separated from the cold water reservoir by a 3D printed membrane. This wall is only 0.4 millimeters thick, exactly two passes of a standard 0.4 nozzle. It's thin enough to allow rapid heat transfer through conduction, but structural enough to hold the weight of the cooling fluid. As the sphere enters the sump area, it sits in this dry pocket. Through the thin plastic wall, the cold water sucks the thermal energy out of the gadolinium. Within seconds, the atoms align the sphere becomes magnetic. High above the track, I've positioned a high-grade N52 neodymium magnet. Its magnetic field is invisible, but its pull is immense. The moment the gadolinium crosses that thermal threshold, the magnet grabs it, slingshotting the sphere up the ramp with surprising kinetic energy. But here is where the real magic of the cycle happens. As the sphere leaves the cooling zone and enters the ambient air of the room, it begins to heat up. Because the thermal mass of a four millimeter sphere is so low, the convection from the warmer air floods the material with energy almost instantly. By the time the sphere reaches the apex of the curve, it crosses the Curie point once again. The magnetic alignment shatters. The pull of the neodymium magnet vanishes and gravity takes over. The sphere drops back down the oval track, losing its kinetic energy as it rolls back into the cooling zone to recharge. Technically, what you are seeing is a classic heat engine, operating on a very small temperature delta. The room acts as the high temperature reservoir, providing the energy, and the water acts as the low temperature sink. It's a beautiful demonstration of energy harvesting. While it may look like a perpetual motion machine, it's actually a harvester, pulling microscopic amounts of energy from the environment and turning it into macroscopic motion. Designing the geometry of the track was another hurdle.
The curve had to be precise enough to allow the sphere to maintain its momentum while ensuring it spent exactly enough time in the cooling zone to reach the transition temperature. It's a delicate balance of dwell time, magnetic flux, and thermal conductivity. We're often taught that energy is something we have to plug into a wall or burn in an engine. But machines like this remind us that energy is everywhere, hidden in the tiny gradients of our everyday environment. It just takes the right materials and a bit of clever engineering to make the invisible visible. This loop will continue as long as the water stays cold and the room stays warm. A silent, elegant dance between thermodynamics and magnetism. Thanks for watching.